Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. If you were in your power, would you sacrifice your life, your children, for immortality? This is a power of a man who did. The Pulp Factory Podcast episode 102. Uh, Superman. Good evening and welcome to the Cold Faction Podcast episode 102 where our spotlight swivels around to the 1972 classic. Mm. Uh, I know, I just couldn't think of a word that followed that. So anyway, the 1972 gothic horror, The Asphyx. And we're in the O's. We're in the O's. That's weird, isn't it? Got the O's. <laughs> God knows. Oh, don't know the name. Is he still Edison? What's he? I don't know. Who's he? <laughs> Prince and O's. <laughs> <laughs> That's a brilliant film. Anyway, back on track. So yes, this is the podcast episode one hundred and two. We're back. We're coming in your ears. And we're no. streaming down your phones. No, we're not. We're <laughs> doing all that stuff. No, that no, sounds just so wrong. I am your host this evening, Damien Hicks, and as most of the time, in fact, consistently for the We've last had a good run. 40 or so episodes, yeah, 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 yeah. I am joined by Paul Hawkins and Brett Summers. So, before we um, get on to what you want to hear, Miss <laughs> Hicks, let's do the bit you don't want to hear. <laughs> well, unless you do. Maybe you do. People maybe like maybe this you bit. like this bit. You, you don't. Yeah, I personally wouldn't listen, but there we go, I'd skip. Anyway, but then so the podcast would be half hour long. We, we, point? We'd be able to go to the pub and everything. Yeah. We could make a night of it. So, what's been going down in Groovetown? Anything exciting? Um, barbecue and mosquito bites at the weekend. Again? Yeah. Maybe uh, you should stop having barbecues. Or, or just going out. On mm. Sunday, I just didn't go out anywhere. It got to a point where... At one point, I was looking to see if I had gout, because <laughs> my knuckle was so bad. Um, but no, it was um, four mosquito bites on my knuckle that just, um, yeah, went horrible. Um, but other than the barbecue and hiding from nature on the Sunday, quite quiet, I think. Yeah, yeah, quite quiet. Mr. Summers, you have some pussy news, don't you? Yes, I am officially a cat person now. I mean, you've always smelt for a while, but, but now, now yeah, your home does time. too. Smell of the what? Mr. Hawkins, you're being rude. Right, so, yeah, we have welcomed Bellatrix and the cat mooter into the household, and um, obviously very tiny and shy at the moment, but yep. I am. You are the cat. <laughs> I'm always tiny and shy <laughs> to see it when it's cold. Um, but, um, but yeah, there, that there. smells of piss too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so does you know, yeah. Yeah, right. So um, yeah. So uh, they are quite cute. The yeah, photos, they're cute. I mean, um, um, cat spam is becoming an issue. I may have to start them their own Instagram so I don't flood everyone with yeah. cat spam. But they're just very photogenic, and it's hard and. <laughs> This, this will be the bit where I finally end up on the one <laughs> show because I took a good cat picture. Yeah. All the things I've tried and attempted in my life, a good cat <laughs> picture on Instagram, they've got, oh, we've got a million shares. Come on, on the one show, Lord. Can we get them a cult faction collar? No, <laughs> we've never wearing t shirts, we shaved down the side of them. Like, we <laughs> Tattooed. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, yeah, but they're, they're, they're having what, 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 what an fun. interesting name for a cat, Brett. Cult faction podcast? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You just seem to really take to it. And here's 
There's a system news glass. <laughs> <laughs> now come on, Alex. Tell us more about the one shot. <laughs> Lol. Ronan, you can fuck off. But yeah, so yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to okay. be on there. <laughs> yeah. That was a bit personal. <laughs> He's already, he's already in the zone. He's already at the one show. <laughs> oh, I've lived that moment many times. <laughs> it's like that bit on Mallrats. Like, you have one having your own TV show. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, that, that's been pretty much that. And watching Glastonbury on telly. Yeah. That's yeah. been um, yeah. most of my weekend. Although most of the bands I wanted to watch weren't on any of the BBC yeah. apps, unfortunately. Because, you know, they probably won't pay to. Yeah, uh, that's always the way, isn't it? Uh-huh. Cool. Uh-huh. What about you, what about me? So, mostly just playing in the garden with the kids. Uh, Your kids, that, my kids that should be noted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, you weren't just dressing up in a shark outfit? No, not this, not this time. Mm. I've still got tape to see if we start holding it or not. <laughs> um, uh, Glastonbury. I mean, I, I had no idea that what was missing in my life was Rick Astley doing <laughs> the Smiths, which was just phenomenal. I, I, I turned it on and thought it was his normal set, and I'm like, is it just not ever going to do? Never going to give you up? <laughs> is that gone now? I must admit, out of all of the acts, I, I think this may be the launch of something big again for Rick Astley. Well, I, I can't wait for Morrissey to do Never Going to Give You Up <laughs> <laughs> forever. Yeah. I just thought it was brilliant, and, and I'm going to watch it again. I think it upset a lot of people, but I think it did because it sounded good. <laughs> and he didn't didn't shut, you know, he, he made quite a few mistakes here and there because yeah. he was coming too early or or whatever. But, but it was just like, rode it out. That's a festival thing. The days yeah. where people are oh, come on stage, like a Dave Grohl come on stage to you where they've rehearsed it fifteen times already. Yeah. You know, you just got in and you, you did something. And it was a bit of fun. It was spontaneous. I, d I did like Dave Grohl having a lot of fun and basically taking over most yeah. of Glastonbury weekend. Yeah, he played with everyone, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. Uh, it was nice seeing uh, GNR uh, at the closing closing their set. Just because he was having a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, again, he was... Yeah, yeah that was the first, I think it was the first time Duff smiled all night. <laughs> 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 he really did look like he wanted to be there. Well, he wore lower trousers and lower coat, and it was like, I'm yeah. really hot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, poor Billy Idol with, um, what they called Generation Sex. It was like him with the Sex Pistols. And he had all his gear on, and he really tried. And in the end, the jacket had to come off. And you could just see, like, he felt like, you could see he'd let himself down. The shame yeah. that he, he had to take his lower jacket off. But he was just, he was just sweating. I, I've and always... 78 or something. You know what I mean? You've yeah. got to give him, people are like... Oh, Axel's throat with this. Billy Idol wasn't that good. Like, Billy Idol's 78. Axel's 61. Did you see He's yeah, got yeah. 10 years on us. Yeah. Um, Cat Stevens. Um, Sparks. <laughs> We're amazing. Mm. And it's like, if you like that kind yeah. of Yeah, they just got my cup of tea. I'm sure yeah. they did really well. But, you know. I like their one hit, and that's about <laughs> it. <laughs> well, they got the new, they've got the new hit now. The girl is crying into her latte. Oh, God. With don't. Kate. Yeah. Thingy was... Kite and did the dance. <laughs> But that, I that's, get, you know, I understand gimmick. it's art, it's performance art, and all that malarkey. But oh yeah, it's just yeah. But that's why I love it's it's funny. I, I must admit, for years I've I'm an art about would I enjoy a festival because I don't like being dirty or I, I like my I like my showers and I like my baths and I like my you know, bus stops. Then. I, I like <laughs> my my comfort. Um, but after seeing a lot of the footage where it was like from cuts to the camera in the background. It's just swamped to mosquitoes, and I thought I'd, I'd yeah, die. Yeah. <laughs> <It's a skeleton. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or, 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 or just like home. just like this. Yeah, but um, if it wasn't for the mosquito, I need to find a mosquito repellent. That, uh, and funny enough, Facebook is just full of ads for these little bracelets that you can wear everywhere. I'm gonna have to give them a go. Give them a go. They're not expensive. Yeah, we'll have to try. Them. About ten though. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, I think they come in packs of twenty. Oh, there you go. Specifically it's designed for people like myself. Get 20, twenty for each arm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else have I done? Oh, I restrung my Ibanez, which is an arse edge. I gave it a proper service and then restrung it. And that, that's a good tie if you don't. Yeah, care. and it is an arse edge, so. I wouldn't recommend. Was it worth it though? Oh, it sounds brilliant again now. But there you go. You know, you have a, have a, a normal guitar, take it straight out, put the new one in, it's job done, you do it, you can do the whole thing in five minutes. Adding keys, <laughs> the, the whole works, and he <laughs> is in the fridge. 
anyway. Oh, that's just there was somebody at Glastonbury, quite a big name, I can't remember who it was, and I was watching him play guitar, and it was clearly that, was it on Guns N' Roses? I can't remember. But they clearly, all, it was all tuned the same, all the strings were the same, because they were just literally going up and down, like as if it was just like the top string, but more concentrating on the singing, but playing. But I can't yeah, remember who it was. I was watching it, it may not have been all the strings tuned the same, there is tuning you can do, so that you can do. No, that. no, it was literally one finger. Yeah, 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 yeah but, 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 but that's what I mean. You can do that. Of course, Chris Cornell would detune loads of stuff to get decent sounds, but yeah, yeah. No, it was, it was all the same note, it was, I can see. I don't think it would have been the same note. A lot of people do that so they can sing. In the album, they go, yeah, rrr, rrr. when then they're live, they've just got a guitar and all the strings are the same, just so they don't have to worry too much. It's probably down the mix. They've already got another two guitarists anyway, yeah, but they yeah. just need something in their hand. Cool, okay. That, that was <laughs> an interesting bit music for us. Yeah. A bit of music chat as well. Yeah. Cool. Maybe, maybe another podcast. <laughs> yeah, another another little right. spin-off. Spin -off. Yeah. That's what we should have done. We should have done Glastonbury pod for the weekend. Yeah. See, Glasto pod. That yeah. does sound like a seventy sci-fi film. It does. <laughs> cool. Right, that's that done. So, what we've we been watching? I'll go to Mr. Summers first for a change. Okay, I started with it was the first episode of Marvel's Secret Invasion, um, which is. Now, originally it was supposed to be set during the blip, but it's not anymore, it's set in the present day. And basically, there's a bunch of evil scrolls who are, who are shape changers, don't you? I'll explain it to you. If you understand it, I'm not you he, he just Yeah, no, if you understand it, you'll He's not even listening to the, No, I know. Yeah. <laughs> he just heard his name and that was it. Yeah, but they were, they were like shape changers who were infiltrating important positions in the government and all that and everywhere and doing bad things. And, um, yeah, good first episode. Lots so, so that's the interesting thing because it it's got mixed reviews, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's the first no, 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 no. Yeah, no, 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 saying. I can't. I thought it was really good. It set it up. It put the players on the board. It had a shock ending, if we're to believe that. Because obviously, when you're in a, a show where people can shape change, you may be surprised. But and this is all the thing: is Nick Fury actually Nick Fury? Yes. Yeah. Do we Thank find you. out in the first episode? Yes. Okay. Cool. You don't have to say yes or no, but cool. We find yeah, out. Well, yeah. He's, he's when you see the old dude, um, and it kind of follows on from the sort of Captain Marvel strand of when he was up there and he went up onto the spaceship. Yep. Um, you see, Martin Freeman pops up. Um, with his little American accent. Yep. <laughs> and, um, but that. That might be explained. Uh -huh. And um <laughs> and then you see um what's the face who won Kobe the Oscar? Swanders. Oh yeah, Kobe Swanders is in it. Well done. Yeah. Well done, Jamie. And uh, what's the face? He won the Oscar and she's the Queen and then she used to be in Peep Show. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She was the girlfriend in Peep Show, now she's like an Oscar winning actress. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, what's her name? Yeah. Oh, she was in she was in Birth as well. Hence why it will never yeah. be. If we can't remember it after five seconds, move on. Yeah. Yeah, but that's quite scary. But yeah, we like her anyway. She's good in it. And um, a few other faces you won't recognise from that. But no, I thought it was a good start. It, again, you know, it's 40 minutes of an eight episode series. No one's going, yeah, it's not what I thought it'd be. It's like, it's called Secret Invasion. It's done everything it said so far. <laughs> you know, it's based on the <laughs> scrolls shape changing and coming in, and, and we've seen that. Yeah, okay, something happens at the end that people might not like, but, but you know, things happen to characters and they have to move on. Ooh. But, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm in it, the, well, I'll be in it anyway, it's Marvel. But, you know, nothing wrong with it at the moment. <coughs> cool, I'm waiting for a few episodes to drop before I stop yeah, watching. No, no, I'm no, waiting for hell to freeze over. <laughs> no, I think you'd like it. Cool. How many times do I hear that? I've given up. I'm yeah. not going to force him. Yeah. I'll always try. Cool. Mr. Hawkins, anything? Uh, yeah, so Silo, almost to the end of the series. Oh, I do want to watch it soon. Please don't just spoil it. I'm not going to spoil it, but it's still good. Better than average. Um, well, it's got a second season, so that's yeah. a positive. Um, yeah, so, so it's top notch, but not a, you know, not five star. 
but that's still good. Um, so the covenant. Six, seven, sorry, five star. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> did you watch the that man. pop quiz the other night? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was good. So um, the covenant on the covenant Amazon yeah. Prime. Oh, sorry, Guy Ritchie's The Covenant. Is probably how I should introduce it. Yes. Because that's what it's called. For some obscure reason, they've called it Guy Ritchie's The Covenant. Because people will watch it. Yeah, but it's got... J- but isn't that there's quite a lot of movies and stuff called The Covenant. So maybe it's just to make it sure it's to di- differentiate. And also, if I don't go, oh, it's, lo- it's all the lock stock people. Hooray. Yeah, but it's not. Yeah, I know, but... I, I, I know. Once you push play, it's got your name to it. doesn't matter. <laughs> it, but it's like... Well, Jake... Anyway, what is it? Because I, I have no idea what you're talking about. All right, so Jake Gyllenhaal, you know, an actor that a lot of people have heard of. Donnie don't, Darko himself. You don't need Guy Ritchie. Mysterio. Ahead of, ahead of the, the, the film's title. Anyway, so he plays a soldier um, in Afghanistan. Um, Dar Salim, apologies if that's not how it's pronounced properly, plays, uh, plays a, an Afghan um, interpreter. Uh, so they're all out there on a little mission. All hell breaks loose. Um, and he ends up basically saving the day and looking after Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, but Jake Gyllenhaal gets flied back to the States and he's left there. So this is, you know, setting up the scene, showing what a lot of the interpreters went through um, and actually yeah. what happened to hundreds of interpreters Um but maybe there's a happy ending. Hey, maybe there isn't. It's it's actually a really good film. Um, it's not like a lot of Guy Ritchie films. And I think that's for the better. It's nice that he's actually done something a bit different that isn't Aladdin. Because um, that shall not be talked about. Um, but yeah, there, there's not the normal comedy banter between you know, the English Cockneys or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, break <laughs> it, yeah, it's, it's actually a good action film. Um, good relationship building between the two main stars. Um, and I think it's definitely worth a watch. Very, very high rating. 7.5, 8 out of 10. Cool. For its genre. Yeah. Give it a Garbage. watch. The only thing I've watched is I finished watching the full Monty that I talked about last week. Oh, yeah. Did yeah. it get better? No. Yeah, kind of. Oh. But it was a low benchmark to begin with. Yeah. So for four episodes, five episodes, it barely made me smile. Then there's one episode in particular that was quite funny. Um, but you can, you, it's obvious where it's going from the start anyway. You can tell that, you know, what's going to be the, excuse me, the, um, does it involve taking their clothes off? No. no, Cli- no. Climax. Yeah. What, what the climax is going to be. Yeah. No, it doesn't involve taking the clothes off at all. Um, mm-hmm. But you know what's going to happen and what the yeah. the actual the, the, um, pivot point of the, this, um, the show is. And, it, and bizarrely, so you, like I said last week, you've got all the cast in there from the original. And they all, like I said, they all kind of meet up or don't meet up and pass each other, you know, in, you know talk to each other in passing sort of thing. And Hugo Spears is in it, but he just disappears after like the fourth episode, <laughs> and you don't see him again. And he's, but he's quite, a, even though he's not in it a lot anyway, it, the character that he's playing has a pivotal role in what's going around, or going on around him, if you see what I mean. So like he owns some sort of company that manages the school that um, both, uh, the, uh, I've forgotten his name now, yeah. Mark Addy and his wife <clears throat> work at. And that, that's the building's falling down and all sorts. But it's almost like it, his character is there just to offer Miles Jupp character a job and then he disappears. Ah, uh, that there was a reason apparently. I, I know Hugo Spears does the detective London something London not London night, but something like that. he does quite a few things, so maybe his schedule didn't allow him to be in it. But to just have him yeah. randomly he was kicked off for inappropriate conduct. Oh. So he was they written him out basically. Okay, yeah, but they could have they didn't actually now. write him out, that's the thing. He's his character is even talked about up until like episode five and then that's it. You don't see or hear from him or his future 
he's engaged. You don't hear from him or Mr. Johnson for the rest of the series. It's just really weird. Yeah, so if they write him out, actually write him out. Oh, he's gone to New York. Yeah, just anything, it doesn't matter what it is. Or, or, or the old EastEnders yeah. thing. Oh, he's gone to Ireland. Because <laughs> the, the last episode is, you know, if, if people want to watch it, I'm not going to give spoilers away, but the last episode is a situation where everyone from the original film you would expect to be where they are in the last episode. Yet, he's not there. But it's just needed one line. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Whatever his name is in it, Hugo Spear is, isn't, is, couldn't make it back because he's in yeah, Venezuela or something. Yeah. Coventry. It's just a bit bizarre. He's, been, he's got sent to Coventry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That would work. That would actually be quite amusing. Um, and that's it. That is the only thing I've watched. So, Brett, back over to you. Okay, I have now finished season two of From. Okay, now. Absolutely not even a hint. <coughs> no, no. Of a spoiler. Uh, no. Things do move on. Probably not being picked up on the podcast, but Brett's laptop has just suddenly <laughs> launched into Mr. Bontastic for some reason. <laughs> yeah, from, yeah? Yes. <laughs> Your playlist needs updating. Yeah. Uncut. Oh, it was an advert, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. That's my ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> Only since Return of the Mac's gone. No, um, yeah, really good ending. I would say sets up a lot of different things without giving anything away. But I think watching, I only watched it last night, and it was actually when I had to go out and take stuff out of the kitchen before I went to bed to get the light off, it was a little bit, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I can put every light on downstairs. <clears throat> so we take it then they've gone for the long game. This isn't oh, a yeah, no, this series. is well written. Yeah, is, I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, season three hasn't been confirmed yet, though. But I think it, I think they've already sort of said, like, you know, that we want five seasons or whatever. Yeah. They've, they've gone with it. Um, yeah, some really cool stuff happens. There's some really freaky stuff that happens. Things do get explained to a point, but as always, it then leads to other things. Yeah. But I honestly think this is. Um, old school money one season because it's 10 episodes a season and I was looking back I thought if this was one season like going back like in the lost days when it used to be like 20, 23 episodes a season that would explain like the ending of season one as a kind of mid-season finale because the ending of season two is a lot bigger than the ending of season one uh, do you remember season you've seen season one yeah 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 when he goes in the tree and he's in the yeah. that bit, yeah. And um, I'm getting time not to ring it. So I, it reminds me of like, in, so I don't know if the writers kind of either chopped it in half or kind of just in their points of storytelling. To me, it's like one big season and that was the mid season. Does that make sense? And then you get, the, so, yeah. you get the bigger boom at the end. Yeah. Because the end of season one was kind of like, all right, but it was stuck. Want. 20 episodes yeah but people don't want that anymore and i think that's they broke that story down in that way but i think in you know 15 years ago we would have got that as 20 episodes and that would have been the mid-season and yeah, yeah. i think that's what they how they paced it out but uh um, yeah no it's harold perrineau however you say it needs some kind of emmy or whatever it is for being good on telly which one was he uh the dude from lost the sheriff sheriff all oh, right yeah yeah because he, yeah. He's good at everything. He was good when he was. Oh, that's what I mean. By now, he's in um, Supernatural. So he's good yeah. Everything he's in, he's still. Sons of Anarchy, he was taking yeah. it from him. Um, Ozzy was amazing in. Lost, he was cool in. I'm sure that Romeo and Baz Luhrmann's Romeo and Juliet as the kids there. And he said, This is like. Have I? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, actually, I watched it. Yeah. Set the sound up. But, um, <laughs> yeah, um, he was, yeah, he, he needs something for this. And the, the other characters all pull their weight. And there's, there's there's newer characters you haven't met yet, so it's hard to talk about anyway. But you, I think you'll enjoy it. it is, it's a long, it's the long game, though. But, yeah, it's good. Cool, cool. Okay, what else? 
And that, do you remember that? Yeah, who's hosting this? Oh, sorry. It, it just looked what like else? he was going to say something else. <laughs> <laughs> now, that is about it for me because it's just been sort of glass of reach and then watching it that. There hasn't been much, much time for the films or the TV shows at the moment. Cool. But, um, yes. So, so, Mr. Hawkins. I am done. Um, one, I've got a couple of things uh, left. One is just nice bubblegum TV, which was Battle Los Angeles. Uh, it's been a few years since I last saw it. Just Aaron, Uck, Aaron Eckhart saving the world from aliens. Loads of like flashback, um, uh, flashback type things like, um, yes, my brother, goddammit, moments. Um, uh, flash, what was it? Flashback? Not flashback. I don't know. I've no idea where the, you're going. Flash forward. No, the back draft. Yeah, you know, the, 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 where they all save the day. Oh, he does a lot of fire. No, so he does a lot of that. Um, and saves the world. I think it's from... a long time since I've seen Backdraft. I mean, that is not exactly a, a, enough a to date. Fire, relevant, relevant. Yeah, but there's like Kurt Russell being the hero in that. So is it's he? basically. Is he in it? Yeah. He plays the big brother fireman, doesn't he? I don't know. I can't remember. I mean. Well, I didn't watch that anyway. But. Because um, you were the one who referenced it. You should. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I will go back and watch that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's actually you know, one of the good sci-fi films where the military fight back because they do it in the streets like proper old school fighting um and yeah he saves a day it's not going to win any awards although there are rumors and there have been for the last few years whether they're going to make a battle at battle los angeles 2 um but yeah i don't think anything's come of it yet so that was my bubblegum tv and then i went and i almost Pick this as my choice for the for, for uh, next week, but decided against it because I wouldn't make people watch this. Um, I thought it'd be Dead Poet Society or something. That's a great film. Yeah, but not, not our remit. No, but as an English teacher, no. <laughs> so I always didn't watch this, but mainly because of all of the hype, anti hype, all that kind of good stuff going around about the film. But I thought, oh, I'll give it a go. Don't worry, darling. No. So this no is this is the one with Harry Styles, Florence Pugh, Chris Pine. I've heard good from this. From Olivia Wilde, who directed it. But the whole thing about this is, for a lot of the the film, most of the noise was not about the film. Originally, it was about she, uh, Shia LaBeouf um, was set to star in it, playing what turned out to be Harry Styles' role. He left because of something that happened. They won't let him wear a bag on his head. <laughs> well, there's some weird love triangle. Is that what happened next? Right. Uh, well, I don't. I don't know why he left. Um, but then there's all the um, uh, noise about whether uh, Olivia Wilde and uh, Florence Pugh were having issues while they were filming. Then there's all the Spitgate episodes with Chris Pine and Harry Styles. Everyone's seen the film of Harry Styles spell, yeah. spitting Diddy Spit or whatever. But I thought I'd give it a watch. I knew there was going to be a twist in it because that's been given away. What the twist is, I didn't know. I, I don't know. So no, I didn't know. know. I'm not going to give no spoilers. No spoilers. No, no, no. no cause I don't want to watch it. But I like the point of view. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I thought I'd give it a watch. It's a really good film. Okay. Uh, it's. It could be better. Kate said it was really good. She yeah, liked it. It could be better, but and Harry Styles acts. He's good at the end of. Um, he's the best thing in the Eternals movie. So, I think he, he is in the end credit. No, the Marvel end credits, but he's in that. I think he does an alright job. Okay. He he's not the star of the film, but the performance he does, I I, I think, is solid enough. Um, Florence Pugh, again really does shine in it i've got a lot of time for her uh, she's really versatile um <laughs> in more ways than one in this film um like potato waffles yeah pretty much she'll she'll, she'll go with anything Waffly, bro, in this film <laughs> uh, no but she she really does steal the show but she's supposed to um because that's her, she's basically the protagonist in this it, it's um i give a little bit of the story without giving the plot away so basically, a couple are uh, working in, uh, for a company that's set up in the middle of nowhere in the desert. All the husbands go off 
in the day to work for the special project that the company are doing. They don't, uh, the wives don't know what it is, it's all hush hush. And the wives just basically spend their day looking after the husbands, doing housework, prepping their dinners, all that kind of good stuff, living an idyllic life. Doesn't sound very idyllic to me. Right. <clears throat> Apparently in the 50s, Oh, but you didn't, no, I don't think, I don't know, you might have mentioned that, but I didn't realise it was Yeah, so it's, it's all idyllic, it's uh, Chris Pine's the head of this company, um, but is there something sinister going on? Um, well, uh, I mean, I, I would suggest watching it, I, it's not... No, well, what, is it on Netflix? Uh, no, it's on um, Sky. Sky? Yeah, the, the only thing I'd say is that I... I would have probably done the ending a bit different. And yeah, let's stop there because you're gonna. No, say no, something. I'm not gonna say. Yeah. Tell him, Damien. Tell him, Damien. But your host. I, I would have changed the ending around slightly. He's gonna ruin it. Here he goes. Gonna ruin it. And, 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 and Chris. And they all shut die. up. <laughs> Jesus. I'm not Jesus. Um, but Chris Pine, they could have made him nice. Oh, they yeah. could have made him nasty. Kind of. He's a bit. His character's a bit in between, and they, they should have gone one or the other a bit more. But yeah, give it a watch. Cool. Good. Anything else? No, that's me. Oh, Don't. I did on... <laughs> I haven't watched it, watched it, but I'm going to look for it. I think it's on Netflix. On Celebrity Gogglebox, there's some... They watch like, this Japanese reality show where it's like Capture the Flag, and they're four teams, but it was like the running man. <laughs> the, t the teams are like, like to get in the house, and they like hold their like, hand, their face, push them, punch them, run on the floor, and yeah, and like, they asked this other team to like back them up to team up against the other team, and then the other team forgot or did I don't know, but it was it was yeah, it was a bit like um battle royale or something, yeah. and it was like sounds like Takeshi's Castle, yeah, but more vicious. <laughs> But yeah, it wasn't. There was no fun. Ha ha ha! One, one step boys, closer though. to the Running Man. Eh? But they were, yeah, they were watching it on. Who was that actor from The Running Man? The one with the um, car, oh, the opera singer guy. Yeah, who is that? Who is that? <laughs> Alan Van Meter Jr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. I've heard he's pretty cool. Yeah, he always get gets the hits on our website. Check it out. Yeah. I'll find the spotlight. Enjoy. <coughs> Why are you doing it? When I first walked through, I never would have cut. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> You ready? Yeah. I don't this off. Just seconds before I start talking, so it's The Affix, also known as the Spirit of the Dead or the Horror of Death, was released in 1972. Directed by Peter Newbrook, this once perennial of late night TV schedules is now a forgotten example of British gothic horror at its pompous best. Starring Robert Powell and Robert Stevens, who were both more famous for stage roles at the time, it mixes L.R. James style of morality with a nod to Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. I don't know if off box office takings or anything because I could find nothing. <laughs> <laughs> when I say largely forgotten, it pretty much is largely forgotten. Well, the weird thing in those days, it didn't really matter, did it? That was it was just filling up cinemas for a couple of weeks. So yeah, because people just along. went to the cinema. They, well, yeah. you know, TV wasn't obviously a major player, so it was pretty much anything made it to the cinema, and it didn't matter too much if it was um, successful or not. <laughs> to some extent. So, um, before we get into the plot and the cast, etc., I mentioned last week this is a film that 
I remember watching a couple of times as a kid, but could only remember the final scene, which now turns out to be the beginning and the end scene. Um, and that stuck with me, but I couldn't remember anything else about the original, uh, sorry, about the actual film itself. Um, so yeah, either of you two ever seen it, heard of it? No, but <laughs> when I saw the director was Peter Newbrook, I um, you know, did a quick look and was like, oh my God, Scott of the Antarctic, Bridget on the River Kwai, Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah. We're in for a visual treat this week. <laughs> An epic. Yeah. Oh, is it really the same guy? So what about you, Mr. Summers? Have you, did you ever see this? I'd heard of it, and I think I'd seen the poster, but I'd never, it was one of those ones, I think I'd seen the poster in, like, classic horror books and all that, but yeah. I'd never watched it. I've heard of Robert Powell. Obviously. Yes. Cool, okay, well that was nice and quick, we don't have to spend <laughs> too much time no, reminiscing. I was excited to go in. Cool. Something different I didn't know anything about. Okay, so we'll just quickly run through the main cast. Uh, as I've already mentioned, Robert Stevens is uh, Hugo Cunningham. Robert Powell is Giles Cunningham. Jane Lapater as Christina Cunningham. Alex Scott as Edward Barrett, or Sir Edward Barrett. Ralph Arliss as Clive Cunningham. And Fiona Walker as Anna Wheatley. There's a lot of Cunninghams there. I think it's, a, it's definitely a, a family, family affair. Family affair. So, um, so Paul, do you want to start us on the plot? Yeah, let's do this. Let's get it done. Let's go through. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just take a breath before I speak about the aspects. Really? Are wonky. They are. Yeah. Okay, so two police officers arrive at the location of a car crash. Two people have been thrown through the windscreen. However, there are legs poking out from underneath the vehicles. And in true 70s no-nonsense style without a thought for head or neck injury protocol, a police officer drags out the legs and declares the man to be still alive. <laughs> Cut to title credits. Ropey music plays over the images of an abandoned laboratory. To be fair though, head and neck injuries had been invented at that point. This is true. <laughs> yeah. So there was no need to... Well, that was no collars, no nothing like that. But it was the 70s. No one wore seatbelts or anything. You yeah. have a drink and a drive, go out and see who you can kill. <laughs> yeah. you know, I'd wait for David Prowse to run in and save him. <laughs> <laughs> or Alvin Stardust. He did a couple, didn't he, for a moment? He did, yeah, I think so. Yeah, th this was like a, the start of a, an episode of The Sweeney. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely all some sort of, you know, kitchen sink drama. Yeah. But to be fair to it, the credits kind of, and the, the ropey music as you put, um, kind of makes you um, forget about it quite quickly. Yeah, it's all it's all a bit odd, isn't it? it? But it is a very, very quick scene, like they had 10 minutes to film it. Because they set it all up, it's like, oh, boom. yeah, he's out, oh, he's alive, Zoom. And it's like, you don't have time to really digest it. It's not overplayed. It's not. And there are a few bits like that in this film where yeah. they do that. And they're, they're not hanging around. There's no scenic. Let's just get a look at his face as he's puzzled and contemplates it. It's like, what do you think? Yeah, okay, let's do that. Let's go. Boom. And it was, yeah, it was a bit weird like that. But an, an unnerving beginning is always a good start, I find. So then the film proper begins. And we travel back in time to the 1870s, where we see a 19th century carriage making its way along the driveway. We're in the English countryside, and philanthropist Sir Hugo Cunningham is arriving at his manor house, where his grown-up children, Giles, Clive and Christina, are waiting for him. He introduces them to his fiancée, Anna Wheatley, who, intends to, who he intends to marry the following Sunday. She, for some reason, looks at the lake for about five minutes and that has no, <laughs> nothing to do with the plot at all. The father also announces that he's brought with him a special camera. Mm. Hmm. So he's got that. his wife to be, he's, he's got kids, his special camera, his kids, he's and ready to rock camera. and roll. The world's first sex tape. Yeah, so, <laughs> so Hugo is later the first on the list. Uh, um, so he announced he's brought with a special camera and we learn that Giles is his adopted son. So it's okay that he's getting on with his sister. And yeah, it's all okay. It's all above board. Yeah. 
later than even. Say that the social services in this day and age. Yeah. There's a, there's a field day here. But later that evening, after some heavy petting, Hugo reluctantly explains to Anna what he has been researching as part of his membership of the Psychical Psychical Research Committee. What's, is it psychological? No. That, that okay. would, that's the brain, isn't it? Okay. Psychical Research It's what they call themselves. Yeah. They just. He and his colleague, Sir Edward Barrett, take photographs of dead people who actually look quite freaky. Yeah, that's well I quite I like they're, that. They're well done images, I think. They, they spent more time on that than they did on some of the other bits, so I'll <laughs> say that. So, yeah, we've got a lot going on here. Yeah. I, I mean, to be fair to the film, I liked. I like the setup. I like the jump back from seventies back to the olden times, because you didn't know exactly what was going on. There was a link somehow. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I think I mean, it's, it's, the, the, you know the the yeah. opening scene smacks you in the face. Yeah. Literally, just boom. And now it's all soft, and prim and proper. Da, 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 da. Almost um. Dark like Tower sister, that That type stuff. Yeah. But it's okay because they're rich. They're rich, and he's adopted, so yeah, all right. everything's fine. And he takes photos of dead people. What did you do? And well, that's thing. what they did in those days. They were all macabre. Yeah. yeah, and it's that sort of traditional setup that you would get in these type of films where normal, well, it does happen, I suppose. You know, if it, in the movie, what, they get bumped off one at a time. Now, we get the big house, we get the people, and you're waiting for the, the killer to start killing. And it just, it just reminded me that I'd be quite good as a landed gent in the olden times. <laughs> Because yeah, he got I, a special camera. I, I, I would have. <laughs> yeah. Because all they do, they basically get a drink when they get back uh, with all their family waiting for them. The you know the servant either gets them a drink or they've got like the the the, the tantalus. The what? Tantalus on the side with yeah. bottles in. That's what they're called. Yeah. And then they goes into London for a night with the lads talking about dead people. And I did like it of like, oh woman, you would understand. Yeah. What I do. Yeah. This <laughs> yeah. is full of that. There, there, there's yeah. lots of stuff in in this film that, yeah, that's definitely seventies. You can't yeah. do that nowadays. Well, it would have been typical of the eighteen seventies as well as the nineteen seventies. Yeah, but yeah, but it is very much. See, I'm no, your place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm on board at this point. Yeah, it's set, it's set stage. these things up. Yeah, I've already forgotten about the beginning because yeah. now I'm like, who's that? So she's that, and they're that. Okay, cool. Yeah. So later on, Hugo is given a slide presentation to the Psychical Research Committee. Edward and Hugo explain that they find a, found a dark smudge in photographs of people who have just died. After extensive study of all the equipment used, and conduct, concluding that no technical errors could have possibly been the cause, they state that this means only one thing, and one thing only. They have photographed the souls of the people who died, leaving the body. On the way home, Clyde seems sceptical as his father's soul theory. Once home, they take a walk through the crypt, family crypt, for no other reason than foreshadowing. <laughs> Hugo tries to explain to Clive, who looks to be his favourite son, that with power comes great responsibility. Yeah, he had it before Spider-Man. Yeah. No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I must admit, there was a few things about this. There are three photos with smudges on, therefore it has to be a soul. Yeah, it can't be anything else. Yeah, it's not... Well, you know, maybe maybe we set up a few more tests or something, yeah. but no, definitely the self. Three. Definitely the self. Def that, that's true self. empirical science. That yeah. is three three subjects. Job done. Yeah, it's all been done. You can clearly see it's the soul. Look, it was yeah. They spent a lot of money on the smudge. It was just like it was going to be something. Maybe I get it, it's supposed to look normal in a picture, but you could have. But again, this was just from their little cameras that they had you know yeah well, you say little they, were, they weren't yeah it was, <laughs> they weren't the special camera that he's got yeah this is just just your box brownie well no i think box brownie <laughs> is about then. i don't know what they were called then yeah but yeah and then they go through the family crypt i mean what is that all about they're rich it's what they, it's what they do that's what they do is it they just yeah that was an 18th century pastime yeah, was to just they, they drink well, they, didn't, they didn't have a piano so like, we'll go yeah, no, piano, no harpsichord Ooh. 
That's, that's a good point. Could he have been that rich? Oh, he probably had musicians come to play for Well, him. there's probably a music room that they just live yeah. in. You know, they spend yeah. most of the time in the library, don't they? So. It's a Mahosheth house, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, but for some reason, we only see one room. Yeah. Man, yeah. yeah, it's Game of Thrones. They've got their own crypt. It was, was it a stage play before, or was it just straight as a film that we had? I yeah, had that kind of, very do you know what I mean, that yeah. sort of, but again, that was, that like you said, that was their experiences, so maybe the directors have done it in that way to play on the strengths of the actors. Maybe, maybe. so, yeah, yeah, yeah it, it definitely plays out like a play, rather yeah. than, than being a, 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 a movie. Um, it's not mentioned on here, but the, obviously both the library scene and the crypt scene, etc., is all kind of setting up that... Um, Hugo's an all-round nice guy. He might well be landed gentry, but he's he's not. He doesn't look down on people. He he offers help oh, yeah. for the yeah, uh, butler yeah. dude. for the butler dude, doesn't he? Or some of his sisters, he all. Yep. And um, says the send the bill. See, I thought he was buttering him up to take pictures. So did I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. what I thought he was going to do. I thought that's where they were going. But yeah. Okay, so he's going to find out that she's knocking yeah. on heaven's door, and I'll bring gonna, my camera. Yeah. <laughs> We should actually have got the yeah. camera ready. <laughs> but no, there's none of that. It's, it's bizarre. Yeah, so you expect him to pop his camera out any yeah. chance that yeah he gets. If oh, someone sneezes, he does. off he, he gets. Does. He's always popping his camera out. <laughs> 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 All right, moving on. So we cut to March at the manor house during a Hugo and Anna's visit, but it's still freezing cold because it's Britain. And it's March. Hugo insists on recording everybody boating in the river. Now... What could possibly go wrong now he's got his camera out? Yes, we're going to... Oh, <laughs> yes, we're going to brush over the fact that Hugo appears to have created the world's first video camera. Uh, it does a good job. But he's rich, you know? Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, kind of sod all this film in the dead malarkey. I'll be straight down the patent office and, you know, look what I've done. But he's doing this for the greater good yeah. of humanity. It's true, he is a philanthropist. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, it's like Bruce Wayne. Yeah, if Bruce Wayne is really handy and likes to chew up some wood, <laughs> yeah. And the okay. West? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, because then there'd have been a shark in the river. Don't know, John. <laughs> <laughs> right, first up on the river, it's Giles and Christina. Well, at this point, I was thinking something's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. All goes well, though, and Hugo catches the jolly in a single take. Then it's Clive and Anna's turn. Well, they, well, while Clive's punting along on the river, he's all get stuck in the mud, which causes him to veer towards the bank, hitting his head really heavily <laughs> on a low hanging branch. He falls into the lake, followed by Anna. All hell breaks loose. Giles tries to rescue them, but the water is so muddy that he can't see anything. Clive's body is discovered late that night, and it's assumed and Anna no is also dead. Shit about Anna. Well, we, <laughs> we see we see a little thing go down the rapids, don't we? Oh, oh yeah, we do. And then he says, "It's just where we think she's gone down the weir or something." Yeah, stop for it. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter because she's just a woman. So yeah, he did love her, but it's over now. Yeah, yeah. and and he's distraught that his son has passed away. He's still after, filming the whole after, whole thing. Yeah, after <laughs> yeah he's still there. <laughs> a vicious blow to the head by the world's yeah. finest tree. Branch. Yeah, and this this was before the likes of Jeremy Beadle had ever come along. But he's yeah. there thinking, I can it's get my two hundred fifty quid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep going. It'll be fine. <laughs> two hundred fifty quid. Yeah, it's a lot of money back in them days. Yeah, you could probably buy a house. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. They probably want like yeah, a, they probably want a horse or something in those <laughs> Yeah, so so we obviously knew something bad's gonna happen. It did. We obviously know that something's captured on that video camera. And yeah. it is. And it is. And it is. And so oh, oh, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm not in this one. Oh, I'm back there. Oh did I get oh yeah, sorry. That's all right, that's sorry. Right. If that's the bit you wanted to read, you go for it. <laughs> it's okay. You're on the post. Fair enough, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, we'll just pick, we'll just do what's on the yeah, other yeah, page. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot easier rather than trying to get it right. So cut me out, is it? Yeah, yeah, I will. Where it starts. It's yeah. fine, you did have 2,000 words last week. <laughs> yeah, yeah he's just getting his own back. 
<laughs> okay, so two weeks later, Hugo insists on viewing the images of that fateful day, despite despite Giles's objections. There appears to be the same black stain. However, contrary to what they first thought, the stain is moving towards Giles, not away. So he decides to photograph the two-week-old corpse of Clive to try and figure out if Clive knew he was going to die. I mean, how that it even yeah. works. I've got. He doesn't even open his eyes because the, the I thought the theory was. The image, you know, they the the they thought that the body, or the eyes rather, captured the image of. Yeah, he's know, been there two weeks. His soul's gone. Yeah, I, I, wait, I, like not even open his eyes to take the picture. So. I, I must admit, I I struggled at this point with the rationale. I need to take a photo to understand if he knew he was going to die. So how did you get that? I was more disturbed that it was two weeks. They still had him laying on the table. They were, he was still in his same clothes. They just left him there. They were, <laughs> it wasn't he's like in the crypt. Was, yeah, well, he wasn't like in a free. Most people in the crypt are in some sort of coffin or something. Yeah, it's it's that, cold. He, that he had handy for later, but he didn't put his son in it. Well, he, he put, yeah, he, he probably got the wine and cheese out in the same <laughs> crypt. Keep, yeah. keep they had some weird traditions around death back in the Victorian yeah. times. So yeah, you know, it's true. but nothing that weird. <laughs> anyway, the photograph reveals nothing. Giles is worried about Hugo's unhealthy obsession and tells him so. However, Hugo ignores this and starts talking about the... Now, we're all saying the asphyx, because that's how you pronounce it, but not, not Hugo. Asphyx is how Hugo first pronounces it. It calms down a bit for the yeah, rest does, of yeah. the movie. But I downloaded the wrong film first. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get your asphyx on. So yeah, uh, he begins talking about the, the asphyx. A spirit in Greek mythology which appears near people who are about to die. And we get a long prologue thing about it's a tormented soul of some sort and it's it's released for a few seconds of purgatory or some some nonsense. Yeah. So so yeah, it manages to escape that by going into dead yeah. people when they're dying mm. or something. This is our this is our like this is the technical bit, isn't it? It's this the is a, you know, it's the yeah. it's not what would normally happen for the you know the, the two teens would go to the library and find the librarian knows all about what they're looking yeah. for, despite being a librarian who's never been to college or anything. You know that sort of yeah. He just knows this stuff. <laughs> anyway, so then Sir Edward Barrett arrives at the manor house with terrible news. <laughs> there is to be a public hanging in the town square tomorrow, as members of the reform movement. Both Hugo and Sir Barrett are appalled. Barrett pleads with Hugo to record the event as an example of the barbaric acts inflicted on fellow humans. At first, Hugo is reluctant, but eventually agrees. The following day, the prisoner is led to the gallows, and Hugo sets up his camera. Despite his wishes, the Reverend says a prayer for the condemned man. Hugo activates his recording equipment seconds before the hatch is opened, and in the beam of light projected on his kit appears the asphyx. <laughs> it seems to be trapped, unable to reach the prisoner. Despite crowd protesting, the ex despite the crowd protesting, the execution continues. However, the man does not die until Hugo stops the beam of light. Yeah. yeah. So we know what Ghostbusters watched. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dan Aykroyd and Hal Ramis, the Rovers. Don't cross the streams. There, I mean, first of all, the light that he shines to get going with all, all the crowd's reactions. Oh, please, this must be a sign. He must be here to stop this. Yeah. Stop this. Is a kind of thing. Okay. Is, was, was, that, was that his ploy to just create this big thing? It's like. I know, but also, why would you be doing this in the first? If you know, if someone's being hung, don't shut. But also, like, Sorry. The, Hang on. the guy's been hung, <laughs> as you say. He's been he's been well hung, and um, <laughs> but he doesn't go. Oh, wait a minute, I might be able to film the soul even. Yeah, he's like, he doesn't oh, think of that, does he? I've got to film that. Oh, yeah. someone dying but again. He's got the It's my he, job. This is the. I think the point that they that. The, the kind it's, of a sub slow descent. it's a slow yeah. descent into his yeah. his but, obsession of madness. But also, I just kind of find it weird because you know he, 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 he is a he is a guy that that you know 
doesn't want to be there and he just sort of, you kind of think oh I'm just going to blend into the background and do this filming you know I don't want to interrupt anything bang <laughs> big flashing light to, 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 to the light. Slimer shows up in a big yeah, heap it pretty much was and also <clears throat> why didn't that happen when it was filmed by the bright he didn't, have, he didn't, he have, didn't the have the light booster. Oh, yeah, he didn't have the, the box for the, the yeah. booster. He didn't have the proton pack. No. Yeah, yeah no, you're right. Sorry, I stand corrected. <laughs> but, um, yeah, this is the bit where I was just like, Ghostbusters is totally still there. Yeah. yeah. And, and that carries on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Hugo has developed the slides and hands them over to Barrett. He also explains to Barrett that he captured moving Im images of the event from the camera that he's invented, uh, but does not wish to share them and wishes to keep them for private purposes. It just sounds so dodgy it when does, he says yeah. it. Barrett pleased to know what he's up to, because it sounds a bit dodgy. <laughs> and then it turns out he invented snuff tape. <laughs> <laughs> but Hugo refuses to give him any more details. Later, Hugo photographs the prisoner's corpse. Upon reviewing the image with Giles, there is no asterisk. They then both watch the execution, and after a long protracted discussion, conclude that Hugo's light booster trapped the entity, preventing the man from dying. From out of nowhere, Hugo asks Giles to find him a guinea pig, a literal guinea pig. Yeah. it turns out. I just think this whole th this is a really protracted, long scene with far too many words that don't need to be there. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, give me a guinea pig. What? Yeah, because he's excited. Yeah. He wants to check it out. If I was Charles, get your own fucking guinea pig. He wants to marry his daughter. This sister. is true. Yeah, yeah. So. sister, his daughter. That's his sister. Do, 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 do. He's so he, boom, he, he's boom. just he's just willing to please, please Hugo. Yeah. So yeah, this is where we get the kind of a little bit more um, librarian dog. And in all, <laughs> all honesty, the the whole discussion. Not, I wouldn't say went over my head, just got a bit, just gets a bit boring. You know what, you know what they're going to do, just get, <laughs> get on with doing it. Yeah, this is typical of the, the hammer. I don't know if it's just the, they needed it to be a, like a minimum length. So you get this in these sort of films, the hammer films, where there's just like some sort of conversation by a fireplace for like two hours. Yeah. It feels well, like. well, I guess the other thing is, it's in the 70s, in the cinema, they're trying to explain things to the audience. Mm. But, without knowing who's going to turn up and watch it. So maybe it's like Invaders from Mars that we talked about the other week. Yeah. Just lots of stuff to try and explain stuff. Although yeah. You don't have the cultural references that we have now. No, to, no. Yeah, to, to kind of, uh, it sounds patronising to say it, but to understand quickly what they're talking about. Because yeah. we've seen all this stuff before now. So I carry on. Yes. yes. Okay. So Hugo <laughs> feeds the guinea pig some poison so that the asphyx appears. Eventually, after some... Overacting, the asphyx is contained and trapped, meaning the guinea pig cannot die. Later that evening, the pair head down to the poorhouse to find some poor and uns unsuspecting soul on the brink of death. They find a man with TB and bring him back to the manor. He appears to have a few days to live, and it seems they have made him a proposal regarding where he dies. They give him one last meal and send him off to sleep in the lab. Later, while Giles and Hugo are in the library, they hear the man's screams and rush to capture the asphyx. All is going to plan, however, the man is in agony, and although Giles pleads with Hugo to stop, Hugo insists on continuing. Finding the pain unbearable, the man throws a substance at Hugo, burning his face and bringing the experiment to an end. Yeah, so, <clears throat> they, they, they prove a lot of stuff in this film. First of all, they've proven that, you know, creatures have souls. Yeah. Who knew? Uh, Mm -hmm. um, but even the guy to heaven was right. Yeah. <laughs> even guinea pigs have cells. They they give you know poor poor man with TB a whale of a time. He's loving it. Yeah. He's having a great meal and yeah he's dying. But hey, he's being uh, waited on. He's got wine being poured. He took through that. He wedding. took that wine with him. <laughs> yeah. He, yeah. I'm off to bed. He, he's <laughs> not letting that wine go. Um, and yeah. yeah. It's a very poetic sort of. Final statement. So I, oh. I've slept in doorways. Yeah. Blah blah blah. If this is God's will for me, then so be it. Turns out that no, because I can't take pain actually. Yeah. So thank you for your time and wine. However, no, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to burn your face off. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
can I can I have another bottle of wine though? <laughs> for my travels. This is the bit I sort of dozed off in and woke up again, kind of thing. How was... can you doze off at this? We had screaming. We had yeah. Oh, no, the I know. I was there. Aspects. I was there at the acid at the end. I just didn't know where the man had come from. <laughs> <Like that. laughs> well, no, that was the place where they found the um um. The, the, where he got his adopted son from, it turns out. Yeah. That's what Harold's was. So he just that. goes down there a lot and just picks up people. <laughs> Pretty much, actually. yeah, to, yeah. to um, film. <laughs> <laughs> and, and know, Victorian countryside was full of poor houses. You know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You had to work just to get a bed for the night. So, you know, he knows what he's thinking. He thinks that there's bound to be some, some bloke on the verge of death or something yeah. somewhere around there. I'll take him back to mine, yeah. give him some wine. And I don't want to kill him. him. I just, I, you know, I want to, I want to find a naturally dying person. Yeah. No, that's fair enough. And you know, and it all does go to plan. It like proves his hypothesis. It does. Yes. Yeah. If we, if you will, and then um, but then he, he gets the scar as well now, which Phantom all, Phantom of the Opera type stuff. <laughs> but for all again, for all like. They clearly spent a bit of money on this with some of the effects for the time. I know we laugh at it a bit now, and then like well, I think it's quite impressive. I mean, it's clearly like, a glove puppet of some yeah, sort, but yeah. then, then, then yeah, they stick know. like some sort of painted brown custard down his face to be like a scar <laughs> yeah. or something. It was like there was better stuff for that in those days. They should have got Ben Lucy to do it for him. He, he could do all that, couldn't he? That's what I mean. Yeah, it was just even like. There was better stuff in kids' programs at this point. <laughs> I think it's probably there directing it going, Scott the Man Tartan is a lot better than this. Yeah. <laughs> Lawrence yeah. of Arabia. I Can't you get me the man who did the frostbite for me? Yeah, <laughs> that'll do. I love that. <laughs> but poor Hugo with his, with his acid scar now. Um, he's That's covering him. in bed. Yeah. <laughs> when he, he could have invented that too. <laughs> that was probably the first yeah. rave. He's in a house. All, all, all the just... screaming. <laughs> As in country house. <laughs> so that's where Pulp got it from. <laughs> was it set in Hampshire as well? <laughs> that was it. And then that, it was knocked down and they built a farm in Russia. <laughs> yeah, so Hugo is recovering in bed when he asks Christina to fetch Giles. Before she even closes the door, he's up and out of bed, removing his bandages. Hmm. When Giles arrives, Hugo insists that he must continue his work, and Giles reveals he suspects that Hugo is seeking immortality. Ooh. Dun, 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 dun. Hugo doesn't deny it and believes he could achieve so much if death didn't get in the way. Exactly. He's, we all? he's doing it for the greater good, not because he wants to live, live forever. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. This is about mankind's pursuit of... Yeah. He's already invented the vi- he's already invented the video camera and it's the eighteen hundreds. Yeah, think what he could have done by now. Yeah. yeah. And also, you know, if you think about it in modern times, he's took a refugee into his own house. And now he's a rommel. He's already on his second wife. Yeah. And he clearly looks after son. his staff. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, he extends health care to the <laughs> Was, he, was before the NHS, I guess. Yeah. Which yeah. he would form many years later. <laughs> and then <laughs> film all the dying people. <laughs> you guys get up and fit the plot. You go convinces Giles to allow him to try, and if successful, make both him and Christina immortal. He has a plan to trap his assets, and by means of a combination lock, Keep it in the vault so it can never, ever be released. Yeah, I didn't understand this bit, why it had to be kept in a vault that he couldn't know the code to. Because he was never tempted to... Yeah, I know, but... To die. Yeah, but... Yeah. Why would you... I would allow myself the option. Exactly. And also, I probably want to go down and check that the water is okay. <laughs> yeah, that's also, a good point. Also, yeah, it's not but... dickless shutting down the contamination again. <laughs> <laughs> is it true? Yeah, it's true. It's man. I don't know. That's a PG film. <laughs> it was the 80s. Yeah. PG films were different back then. But anyway, this the secret combination is to be written on an envelope and should be... And should the experiment work... 
Hugo will destroy the envelope so he can never release it himself. Mm. So, you know, it's pretty straightforward. We're going to do that. We're going to make everyone immortal. Mm. We're going to have a great life. Yeah. Forever. Everyone's aware. <laughs> but, meanwhile, Christina wakes up to a guinea pig on her bed. And unperturbed by this, she simply lets it out the front door. Yeah, I'll just put that in there because it just struck me as the weirdest thing. I don't think she'd seen the guinea pig before until this point. She and just wakes up, there's a guinea pig on your bed. Oh, yeah. I'll let it out of the front door. Yeah. I'd freak the fuck out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there was a bit of me that thought, is it going to turn into a zombie guinea pig from hell? <laughs> you start gnawing at yeah. her neck or something. <laughs> but no, it didn't. No. And, and she just released it into the wild. And it's probably gone on to, to, to live forever. <laughs> It works with Frozen Rat years later. Yeah. Although only if she'd have seen it and thought, there's a big rat in my bed and killed it, we'd have had a completely different film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So don't be nice to the guinea pigs, kids. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you should be nice to guinea pigs, though, because like, for most of their lives, they're, they're treated like guinea pigs. True. It's a tough life. Right. Hugo has the idea of electrocuting himself in an electric chair while Giles traps the Asphyx. Reluctantly, Giles helps Hugo while Christina is nosing around Hugo's study. During the electrocution, Giles suddenly realises, like, because I didn't think it through, yeah. he cannot guide the light booster and open the trap. But luckily, Christina arrives and panics. <laughs> Giles slaps her to make sure that she's you know, recovering from her um, freaking out. And she is the one who moves the light to the trap to trap the Asphyx. While Hugo is recovering in bed, Christina and Giles take the Asphyx down to the vault, almost dropping it, and Giles explains what's been going on. She doesn't believe him, so they convince her by locking Hugo in an airtight coffin for the night. Brilliant. And also, I can't remember whether it was this scene, uh, and apologies if you've written about it in the next, but he's promised not to tell her anything, but he does tell her, and then says... But you have to forget. Yeah, you have to forget everything I've told you. Woman, forget. Uh, again, there's so much in this bit. It's like tell her she's joined in on the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. It's like... You have to tell her what's going on. But when she comes rushing over to Giles, <laughs> he's already he's he's already got his hand back, ready to slap her. Yeah. It's like he's been wanting to do that for fucking years. <laughs> well, now is my opportunity to give her a sister, damn good it? slap. Yeah. Take fifteen. All those times <laughs> you used to pick on me. <laughs> Maybe yeah. they didn't like each other. Maybe, but it's, it just struck me. He's like, because Robert Bauer's got this look of hatred in his face. He's like, I've been waiting for this moment. But it's like, all I need to do is die a bit and catch the asset. So let's do that in the most grounded <laughs> way. But I could have just took a tablet and yeah. sort of done it. When you poison the guinea pig. Yeah. yeah. Maybe just give me some poison. We'll do it. No, electricity. And the other thing. Okay, so they were trying to get her to believe in it. They come down and he just unscrews the coffin and he says, Ta da! It was airtight, honest, Gov. It's like, hold on. Yeah. Put you could have like, just got in there before you come yeah, and got me. Put him in a tank of water that you can't get out of. Then make yeah. sure that he's immortal. Hang him up in the, above the Thames in a glass perspex box. David Blaine style. Yeah. But also, then, so is this. Or oh, stab him! Shoot him! Stabbing. Burn him! <laughs> we use a laser gun that he's probably invented. <laughs> <laughs> but are we saying then that there is only one aspect, or does everyone have their own aspects? Everyone has their own aspects. And animals. Yeah, so every every living creature has its own aspect. You should have tried it on the insects as well. Yeah, to it doesn't out, really then. kind of... Because he's like, he's caught that one, he's caught that one. And then it's like, so is no one going to die now? No, 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 but, like, but they don't when they initially. Oh, no, yeah, I think it's just in part. Like, yeah. Be because you know they need a containment system big enough to store all the asphyxes, and we know how that works. Yeah, now. yeah. That was funny about in Twinkies, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the Twinkie, Hugo. Yeah, right. Let's move on. So uh, <coughs> Hugo then states her and Giles can only marry if Christina agrees to become an immortal. I hate it when people do that. Yeah. I mean, you, you get those conditions. On you, you get yeah. prenups. Yeah. But hey, but this is an extreme. From that moment on, Hugo starts behaving weirdly. 
He berates his friend Sabarat and guilt trips Christina into accepting immortality by saying he wants Anna to marry Giles so that they have children and the lineage can go on forever. Christina doesn't like her father's plan, but she finally obliges. And now, for no logical reason, Christina's method of near death is to be a guillotine. Yeah. It's all been set up, <laughs> and a constant feed of water has been rigged to sustain the booster, but the guinea pig chews through the feed. The light goes out, and in the ensuing panic, Hugo causes Giles to release the guillotine, and despite having captured this fix, Christina is in too much pain, so Hugo releases it, killing her then. Okay, so there was a lot about this where you knew what was going to happen. Yeah, it's obvious what's going to happen. But also, there's a weird, weird melding of they've really thought about this, so we need a constant water supply. What we did for you, that works perfectly, but we can't have that anymore, yeah. so we get a tap and feed Run it through. A rubber hose from. Yeah, feed it through into a rubber hose. 20 feet away. Yeah. And again, now we've got that guillotine still in yeah. the shed. Because even though electrocuting you works... Every man at house had yeah. a guillotine. I'm going to randomly let a guillotine drop. Stop it. It's... it's yeah. 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 And she's there going, this, can I not just poison myself? It's like, just no, you Paul, need to be awake, love. It's just some like Paul Daniels life story. It's just yeah. like all this stuff comes from, isn't it? <laughs> Debbie McGee is immortal. Maybe no, so. so she, yeah. still, she doesn't strip me or nothing. She's still going. But um, yeah, this was a bit. I don't know. And Christina just goes along with everything because she's a woman. No, uh, that's what they and did. Before back you then. email in, yeah, that's it. We're in context. And that darn guinea pig. <laughs> oh, he's a cheeky one. <sighs> yeah. But in the end, yeah, she. Like a typical woman, she loses her head over it. Anna. <laughs> Context. And he slapped her to bring her back to her senses, yeah. but that didn't work. <laughs> but yeah, she's dead. Poor Christina. And old Giles, he feels guilt over it. But Hugo wants to die now as well. He wants to join his children. So he's looking for the combination, but Giles refuses to give it up. He convinces Hugo to make him immortal, and only then will he give up the combination. Later, Giles appears to be hatching a plan. He swaps the blue crystals used in the light booster for something entirely different, which looks like Dad Ultra. Yeah. Giles has thought about the way he will be killed, so to speak. He will be enclosed in a glass case that just happened to be hanging around. Yeah. And then Hugo... And it's, it's also clearly made of plastic, which yeah. didn't exist back then. But then maybe Hugo invented plastic as well. Yeah. He just... He jumped straight past, straight over by Bakelite and went straight for the plastic. I think Hugo's a time lord. But he invented time travel. Right? And then Hugo will put gas in through a pipe. So they're going to pipe into a box and gas in, basically. Yeah. Which is probably one of the least crazy ones they've done. But just to have all that equipment nearby is, is a little bit silly. So well, every every um, lab had a Bunsen burner. Admittedly, not every 18th century lab had a... Yeah, with a 20 Perfect foot head. pipe. <laughs> <laughs> so, when Giles is about to die and the lamp doesn't work, Hugo has time to put oxygen in, but Giles wants to die. So, he takes out a match and softly whispers, Christina, and lights the match. Boom! The inevitable explosion goes off, and Hugo comes around and realizes what he has done. Besides, he must spend eternity expunging his guilt. He destroys the envelope containing the combination. Hugo is not alone now. He has his companion in immortality. The guinea pig. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, there's a few things, isn't there? We've already talked about the new way of dying. Um, but I was, I was at the end thinking, okay... He is this him trying to get his own back? Yeah, and that's not really the combination code. This is just a. It's gonna you, open you, up to be the yeah, who sucks or something. Yeah, you, you killed yeah. you killed my sister, aka wife to be. Um, sot you. Yeah, you're gonna, gonna be immortal forever now, feeling your guilt. Yeah. There's no yeah. way out for you, you bastard. It just wasn't 
clear enough if this was a double cross no, it or wasn't. a thingy or anything. No, no, he didn't no. really. But he, no. he had no intention. He didn't intend for Hugo to <clears throat> spend eternity suffering. It was just he didn't want to Live suffer himself. But, so. but, but then, so, yeah. But so then they, I didn't understand why go through all of that, and why didn't he just kill himself? Because he. The voice he he's getting flashbacks in his mind, isn't he? The the voiceover is that he has to spend now eternity feeling. No, guilty. no, 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 no. Why didn't Giles just kill himself? Ah, uh, you know, you don't kill yourself in the eighteenth century. You go straight to hell. But he did kill himself. He didn't, though, did he? He did. He blew himself up. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, himself technically, up. though, technically he lit a match in a box. Well, you knew about it. What match is he in his head? Yeah, those matches, yeah, yeah. but they were in a match book like you get from a casino. No, they, they were. They were in a. No, no, they were in a. Like it was a proper metal, metal uh, um, yeah, okay. strike thing. On. That's yeah, my and also, he's he's been and he's been thinking about it. So I'm going to replace the blue crystals with white crystals. What? Why? Which yeah. had no nothing to do with anything because he blew himself up. Yeah, but the it, the the had to make sure that the yeah, aspects could be fixed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But why not replace them with something else that was blue? Yeah, at the very least to yeah, yeah. keep that subject. Don't look in there. I've yeah, already I've done already it. done it. I'm yeah. just so excited to get on with it. And and it was also the bit. I'll just go to the safe and get the combin. Uh, sorry, I just go upstairs to the study and get the combination. No, no, don't do that. I've already got it. And that's why I was thinking. Aha. Yeah. He doesn't want you seeing the, the, the combination because he's fooled you. Yeah. But no. No. It was just a, no, no don't, he's, don't he's do that. He's loyal to Hugo to the end. Yeah. Bizarrely. But then, you know, Hugo did rescue him from the poorhouse. So. Yeah, and gave him his life that he Yeah. Anyway, back to contemporary times and a man with a really dodgy face. Hugo with a complete, oh yeah, the disfigured face. <laughs> caresses a guinea pig as he steps out into the road. This is the accident we saw the aftermath at the beginning of the film. Boom. So he kills another couple of people. Now. Yeah. And then walks off down a council estate in London. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. I like that bit. <laughs> what, I, I, did, I kind of thought he's he just killed a couple more people for no reason by standing out in front of them. Yeah. Two people bastard. who were driving on the same side of the road at like probably 50 miles an hour at yeah. each other but hey and yeah. also he's immortal now so where's his bloody sword i reckon he just tries it every so often to see if he's still like in alive. highlander <laughs> you know? sorry Brett, what was that no i was just saying i reckon every so often he just tries to see, am i still immortal yeah okay yeah. groundhog day <laughs> but i like that bit i thought that bit was clever because that leaves it open then for the sequel if it doesn't happen yeah but um, and then to be fair, I mean, if he wants to die now, all he really has to do is get a digger of some sort and dig underneath where the vault. Well, he's invented a laser. He could have just yeah. cut his way into the vault. Exactly. Maybe he invented jetpacks. But yeah, it's it's yeah, it's right. Like, anyway, so yeah, like, that's yeah. um, that that was the plot, the walkthrough <laughs> of um, the Asphyx. Well, no, that was the aspects, wasn't it? Like we do every week. Right? Yeah. You have to say, though, <laughs> when you said an ending, I was expecting something a lot more gruesome and scary. Sorry. No, it's all right, because what you said, like, it left an impact on you and all that. Well, yeah, you, it, was, it was a creepy ending, yeah. don't get me wrong. His like, face alone, good. if I was a kid, yeah. might give me yeah. nightmares. I was probably about eight or nine when I saw this, so. Man, imagine the guy getting pulled out is very much that sort of 80s sort of witches in the beard of it was more the disturbing imagery than it is the scare but i just i don't know i don't know what i was expecting oh i'm sorry to disappoint uh, no, it wasn't disappointing it was different. <laughs> it was different. okay so uh thoughts i'll go to brett because paul's impaled i would well i don't want to get asphyxiated <laughs> 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 that must be where that comes from actually yeah that's where the uh, yeah yeah, yeah. oh you did talk to but, um, it's like I thought about a pun. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know which one to go with next. I was thinking of Michael Hutchinson. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> David Carradine was one of them. No, um, yeah, no, it's a good film. I think it's a good idea. 
I think it's very much, for me, it was very padded out, which all these films are, and that's always been my problem with the Hammer stuff and all, all this sort of genre of vamp in the Italian vampire ones. Because they have the bits they do that are the story, and then there's just really long dinner scenes or really long everyone sat around the fireplace or really yeah. long exposition stuff that you don't really need. I mean, this to me. Like everything say else, <laughs> what would it do? It would make a really good TV series. No, I would <laughs> say, no, 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 not one oh. off. I mean, to me, this this was just a really long episode of Tales of the Unexpected. Oh yeah, definitely. which is weird because he went on to direct a lot of those. Oh, of course. Um, but he had good practice. But this should be the pilot, and then we get Hugo with the mouse. Kind of guinea, guinea pig, sorry, <coughs> traveling town to town, but through, but through the years, taking photos of so, people. No, but like, <laughs> no, but each season, no, they do solving do, problems, like yeah, my way to heaven. <laughs> yeah, pretty much with his vast scientific knowledge. As his face slowly disfigures. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what I want. But that's his. I'm here to save the children. Get away! <laughs> and then no, but as it goes through, do you want some wine? We we move through the time, so we can make something cool. And then by the time we end up to like. So the the, the the eighties, like we've got that thing where he's gone back and it's now like the grandchild of the people we said saved years ago or whatever, you know, you could have all those little the same people coming back but playing younger generation future generations of themselves and all so that. So it's a bit like Gandalf. Yeah, kind of <laughs> thing. And but just in a kind of littlest hobo like way with a guinea pig, you know, moving on down town, but he can't die. <clears throat> And that, but that's the that's the um, that's what you make it a bit more gothic. So it's just that you know it's actually like an issue to him. Like things happen. It's just like oh god, stop, we die or whatever you know. And he wants that, and that's it. And then maybe finally at the end something happens where he's released. He's released. Or, or like if, yeah. if it was remade for this day and age, it would be a dog, not a guinea pig, wouldn't it? Probably. He's, he's not going to carry a bloody guinea pig. Well, I like that. There was um, Marvel done a revamp probably about ten years ago now. I say recently, um, and they redone the Hulk as the Immortal Hulk, and they kept it the same story of the Hulk we all know. Seriously, how have we got well, we've gone from the aspects of nineteen seventy two gothic horror to the Hulk? Actually, well, didn't move an inch. Wow, well, it just the gets Hulk, right the on Hulk my... here was based on gothic horror. <laughs> Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah, well, whatever. Well, like, Go on then. Um, well, Bruce Banner goes round saving the day. Well, no, no, no. no. In the, the Immortal Hulk, mm. it, it goes up to more gothic element of the fact of, like, it, it's just that I, am, I can't die. Every time something's going to happen to me where my life's danger, I turn to the Hulk, I wake up somewhere else, and I've got to get on with it again. And I've got to rebuild it, and then this will do it. Something's going to happen, or something does it, and I'm about to die. You know, I can't die. It's not fair. I've had enough of this. I wonder, they went really sort of gothic and morbid with it for a while. And it actually got really good rather than, oh, Hulk do something bad again. Yeah, we're yeah. chasing. And they went down that real kind of, it was almost a bit Poe-like or a bit gothic self-hatred and all that sort of thing. Just just, and it, no, but at some point, it was almost like, you know, every time we try and kill himself. <laughs> Kenny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, they did that in South Park. Um, but it's almost, it's somewhat, he would try and kill himself, but he would turn into the Hulk and he did it and survive it. And it was that, so I get on, it, that would be quite good for old Hugo going town to town, saving people, but really wanting to die, kind of thing. And every okay. leap was a leap of person of death. <laughs> but yeah, that, that, that's my idea for it anyway. Mr. Hawkins? Again, I like the idea of it. I liked, I actually did like the film. A lot of it. Not necessarily from watching the film, but you know, that's Ghostbusters. That's how they trap them. This is what. Yeah. <laughs> um, but there are just some glaringly, uh, as we talked about here, it's like, why would you get a guillotine out of all the things to kill her with, yeah. or, or not kill her rather? You know. I want, to, I want to see what else is in their garage. <laughs> yeah, he's got an electric chair, he's got a guillotine, a glass like, box. But it's like the Adams family, just on steroids in this place. Um, 
a Bengali white tiger. There's all the stuff we bring us in there. <laughs> Secret of Roy. But you, you must have, I was just, after it, I was thinking, that's a director that's directed this and that and that. This is... Robert That's Stevens. why he ended up on Tarzan. <laughs> yeah. This has got Robert Stevens in and Robert Powell, who go on to, to like, well, Robert Powell in particular goes on to do all these phenomenal things. So, this is obviously a stop it, stepping stone for them. Part of House of People are fishing loads. Exactly. <laughs> but, yeah, I, and then I think at the time, it was like saying you know, that the film industry in the UK was suffering, and that's why he went into TV work. Um, it's got its flaws, but at the same time, yeah, we, we've watched a lot of stuff over these last couple of years. I watched it all and found it funny. It was obvious in some places. It's not supposed to be funny, to be fair. Um, but I didn't hate it. Cool. I'm very similar, to be fair. Um, it, obviously, it was my choice. It wasn't a choice for a film that I had any particularly love, particular love for. It was... As I said last week and earlier, it's just that I remembered the final scene and decided that I need to go back and revisit after finding out what it was actually called. It meanders, it's hammy, the acting, I mean, Hugo just eats scenery in every every scene he's in. Um, there's a hell of a lot of stuff in there that doesn't need to be in there. Yeah. And it's clearly, they've kind of sat down and thought, yeah, this is a great idea, but it's not scary enough. So let's use a guillotine. <laughs> that would be quite scary. And an electric chair. Let's do that rather than poison, because that would be boring. And, yeah, it meanders. But, like you, I actually quite enjoyed it. I'm not going to go out of my way to watch it again for any particular length of time. I might never watch it again for the rest of my life. Yeah. But, <clears throat> it was an enjoyable... 80 something minutes of cinema history. So, ratings, I'll go with you first, Paul. I'm going to give it 6 out of 10. Cool. Um, I, I think it, it's worthy of that for the idea. It's based in, and set in the, you know, it's filmed in the 70s. I like the modern day, this could be an episode of the Sweeney or whatever, cut back to the 1870s. I, I like the pomp and pageantry of the time. Oh, I think the actual sets and everything, it looked, everything about it yeah. looked good. It looked good on screen. It, it's not, you know, there was no wobbly backdrops or anything yeah. like that. So It yeah. just it had a few flaws. Yeah. But I forgive it that. Mr. Summers? Um, yeah, I mean, it's no different, really, than anything else that was getting churned out at that time. Be it, well, Hammer might have had a bit more blood and gore. Maybe because that was what the fact, or the, the yeah. Italian directors might have been a bit more bloody, but you know the period drama of it was shoulder to shoulder of any of the other things that those studios were bringing yeah, out. Yeah, but you, I mean this is this isn't a um, a, a blood and gore horror. This yeah, is, that's this what is more, this is surreal. Yeah. Like I said, it's a, it's an Omar Jane style yeah. morality tale. Rather than it's, a, it's not that's not what it's after. But I'm saying, but if you look at it, it's it, if you put that next to all those shot for shot you know you're gonna it, you think it was a hammer film if you did yeah I, you know, I, I think I said it last week I was, when I couldn't remember what it was I wasn't sure if it was a hammer horror or not or whatever so you know it, it stands up with those and what lets it down for me I think it, it's the pacing because mm. like I say I snoozed at one point I might go and watch that bit now because I don't even remember the hanging bit I remember in the, the ass of it later on but it was just at that point, it droned on. Then it would speed up really quickly. Then yeah. drone on a bit again. That's what and I meant by kind of the meanders. Kind of, it's kind yeah. of, you know, there's a lot of bits where it just, it's got a really slow pace. Then it really speeds up. Yeah. Then it just goes down again, which is very much like Hugo's acting, to be fair. <laughs> yeah. But again, but compared to a lot of the Hammer and the Italian horror stuff, this is a, an original idea. Most of them were... You know, vampires in yeah, various forms, yeah, yeah, be yeah. it male, female, or both, yeah. both on both, <laughs> whichever they were trying to be. <laughs> you know, they've gone, like you say, it's a cerebral take, rather than blood shock and gore. But there's just something about it just sort of dragged it down a little bit for me. So I'll probably go... Seven. Seven. Yeah, 
to say, I want to say six, but it's out of balance if I'm doing six. Because, <laughs> yeah. But no, I'm going to give it a six. Because again, most people are on point with the acting. The other brother who got hit on the tree branch, he can, he can jog on. But <laughs> uh, even, even in the, um, when, they, when they show it back, the, the, the footage he's filmed, he leans up to hit the, hit yeah, the branch. Yeah. <laughs> and then they really just got like a massive, like, it's... it's like his skull's been caved in. I mean, he, he, if, he, if he was on a speedboat, I kind of yeah. get this. Yeah. He's punting along the river. Yeah. <laughs> one mile an hour yeah. kind of thing. And I, yeah, no, I'll, I'll go six. Yeah. Only because obviously without this we wouldn't have had Ghostbusters. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. Okay, I'm actually going seven. Ooh. So, as you know, I love Emma James style. I, I, my, I much prefer this kind of stuff to your saws and your Krugers. Not that I dislike Freddy Krueger films, but they're a different, yeah, yeah, different, they're genre, different, different part of the genre. Yeah, it, yeah, it is a different so I, you yeah. know, I, I'll, I'll listen to audiobooks of this stuff. I mean, it's no I ghost like, story. It's no ghost story. You're right, but I, I still enjoyed it, and you know, the fact that as I explained the multiple times now that left an indelible image on me when I was eight years old. So whilst I agree with everything you say, and I would probably, on if this was the first viewing, I would give it a six. But I'm giving it a seven purely on the fact that I remembered it from eight years old. Hey, so, this, this is a safe space. If you give it a <laughs> ten, you'd be out the door. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> get a ten. But it, gets an, it just gets an extra bonus point for its indelible mark it left on me as an eight-year-old child. Not like I remember what the film was called, or any of the other parts of the film, but, but I, could, you found I could remember that face and the guinea pig. Yeah, Although my mind films. was a mouse. And to me, that was always what that was the mission, original sort of mission statement of cult faction. It was like, we remember all those things that you kind of do. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. That was the sort of. Yeah. And today we bought you one of those. Yeah, I'm right. Okay, so it's probably time that the spotlight swivels. In Paul's direction, where he can give us the lowdown on his choice. Okay, next week. so this has been on my catalogue of things to bring to the table. I wasn't necessarily going to do it this week, but we've talked about a lot of references to Ghostbusters. <laughs> so it just harked that um, maybe, maybe now is the time to bring this to the table as Ernie Hudson. Um, uh, makes an appearance in this film. I'm bringing us to, well, actually, uh, it's um, 20, uh, the year's 22,000 or something. But I'm taking us back to 1983 when the film was made. It is and holds a lot of um, memories for me, but maybe lots of people haven't heard about it. Or come across it. I I want to give this a rewatch. Um, it is Space Hunter: Adventures in the Forbidden Zone. <laughs> so Peter Strauss, Molly Ringwald, Ernie Hudson, as I mentioned. Um, I can remember pretty much all of this film. I loved it. <laughs> loved I it, loved went. It, loved that's it. a bold <laughs> statement to make. No rewatch. <clears throat> Just saying. No, I haven't. Yeah, I know. I, and this is this is my point. I absolutely love this watched it basically on repeat probably when i was going through my phase of skiving off school it was you know combination of star wars um combination of space hunter um i went to cinema to see this <laughs> so just be interesting watching it years on cool so where is it available uh is you can rent it on apple i know that much it was or used to be available on Amazon, um, but it when I looked, it says it's not available in this country. No, oh, one of those. But um, I believe it is Michael Ironside. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Michael I Ironside. Believe it? it's I believe it's. I believe the Arrow player, because I've got the Arrow Blu-ray set of this that I haven't watched yet. <laughs> at that time, it, it was a little while ago. It was in the sale, and I was like, yes, I'm having that. I got it along with. I forgot what it's called now. It's all made Tom Selleck. Apparently, hunts robots. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. rings a bell. Anyway, let's not go down yeah. that route. So, Space Hunter: Adventures in the Forbidden Zone. 
uh, if you want to get it on mainstream <coughs> uh, subscription services, it is available on Apple TV for three forty nine. You can do it on Google Play Movies for two forty nine, and the same price <coughs> on uh, YouTube. So that's your homework for next week. Go off and enjoy that. It's now time for us to start our shutdown procedure. So seatbelts on, <laughs> trays in the upright position. Don't forget to rate. Don't switch off your phone though. No. <laughs> yeah, don't, <laughs> don't forget to rate and review us on your preferred podcast app if you did watch The Asphyx and thoroughly disagree with us or want to make a suggestion for a film we should be reviewing, uh, revisiting I should say, then you can email us at compactionpodcast at mail.com or if you just want to get some latest news uh, trailers comment pieces etc movie essentials articles yeah all that good stuff you can visit our mothership which is cultfaction.com cool what we are gonna say and be those of you that are watching us on youtube thank you don't know why but you know yeah. you're, you're doing it and we appreciate that don't forget to leave comments like subscribe check out the merch store <laughs> we Stop should. saying that. We don't have one. Yeah, if you want it, we will build one. If you build it, they all come. <laughs> cool. There's nothing else to say, I don't think. So, again, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. If you've got this far, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a goodbye from me. And it's, it's a goodbye from me, Paul Hawkins. And it's a farewell from me, Brett Summers. And I should say my name because you both have, so it's <laughs> goodbye from me, Damien Hicks.